Now we'll go to the fourth presentation, Dr. Sham Sundar Reddy from Global Hospitals, uh, Hyderabad. Uh, good afternoon, uh, respected teachers, seniors, and uh, colleagues. Uh, today we are presenting, I mean, uh, it's an interesting case. I mean, it, it uh, uh, emphasizes the importance of a uh, uh, lot of precautions which are to be taken while during an angioplasty. So a rare but a significant complication post angioplasty presenting. We had a patient who was a 58-year-old male who presented unstable angina. His risk factors was diabetes and hypertension. <coughs> CAG was done elsewhere where the LED showed a proximal 90% stenosis and RCI had a non was a non-dominant vessel with a diffuse disease. So here you can see the angio. LED and proximal LED is a 90% eccentric stenosis. <coughs> so subsequently he underwent a PTC plus strength to proximal LED with a bare metal strength at that place. Uh, the procedure was eventful. The patient was discharged stably no issues at all. And then the thing started. Patient was having fevers with chills and rigors a few days after the PTCA. So locally he was treated, evaluated, given some antibiotics which had a partial relief. But uh, subsequently he continued to have a low grade fever and he came to us for further management. Initially the 2-day echo showed no RWMA with good LV function with minimal pericardial effusion. So, and he had a minimal chest pain. So our first was whether it was a Dressler's. Even though it was uncommon after angioplasty, still case reports are there. So in that uh, as an afterthought, we also sent blood cultures because the TLC was mildly elevated, it was around 12,000. So the first option was dressless and we somehow sent blood cultures in uh, just as an afterthought. Initially with endomethacin, he was okay for one day, then subsequently again he used to continue to have fever. And on the day three, the blood cultures grew methicillin sensitive to Staphylococcus aureus. So we suspected something else is going on. The effusion started increasing mildly and uh, a patient was having pain, chest pain. So we went ahead and did an angiogram. Uh, the angiogram was a very shocking revealer to us. Here we can see a large coronary artery and it is a pseudoaneurysm infected probably, arising from the standard portion of the LAD. So it was a threatening uh, view to us in the cath lab. So subsequently the patient was kept on antibiotics and we referred to the surgeon because of the increasing pericardial effusion. The surgeon, uh, after adequate antibiotic cover, he took him for uh, CABGs. So these are the intraoptic findings. There was a blood stain, pericardial fluid with pericardial adhesions, the thick layer of peel all over the heart, and abscess on the proximal LED with 10 to 15 ml of pus with underlying aneurysm. So the surgeon went ahead, closed off the aneurysm, sealed off the aneurysm, drained the pus, and he did an uh, cephalosphenous graft to the left anterior descending artery. So after that, a couple of days of antibiotics, we took him for a check and to see how it was looking. We can see the sealed off aneurysm with LED, and the uh, uh, good, well-functioning uh, so SVG graft with LAD flow, TM3 flow. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this goes on to show that the importance, the care to be taken because even though the infected aneurysm is uncommon, but when they are co common, they might be very uh, delirious to the patient with increasing mortality as well as morbidity. We went on to see that literature review. There was an Swiss med weekly. They presented sent cases. Most of the organisms were staph aureus as Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And they proposed some risk factors probably which they said that might be the indicators to say that probably these patients might go into these things and probably putting on extra antibiotics or probably a good antibiotic cover might be useful in this, such as difficult vascular access patients, patients with multiple skin punctures, repeated catheterization with the same vascular access site, extended duration of the procedures, use of multiple PTCA balloons, deferred removal of the arterial sheath, presence of congested heart failure, as well as age more than 60 years. Similarly, another report from another center where they discussed around four cases. Here, the most common organism similarly was Staphylococcus aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus as well as Pseudomonas aeruginosa. In our patient, the patient initially grew methicillin uh, sensitive Staphylococcus aureus, but subsequently the pus which was taken from the CABG, uh, it grew Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Patient was treated with both antibiotics. Subsequently, and follow up after six months, he is doing fine. So, thanking you. This is another. Uh, uh, showing a laid open stent with an LAD segment containing the pseudoaneurysm with stent in C2. This is not our patient because we couldn't get a pictures of our patient. This is another image which I downloaded from the web. Thanking you. What, what was the reason actually for rebinding angiogram? Next, we wanted to see how the things were going. Patient. No, no, but did he have any evidence of uh, ischemia or any angina or any cardiac uh, event? To no, sir, the patient was doing stable. We just wanted to see the, whether things were going on fine because it was done as an emergency procedure. Still was an antibiotic, not no, an no. optimal so antibiotic. What I mean to say, as a cause of fever, did you actually suspect something wrong at the, at the coronaries? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, in the initial part you are asking, sir. Initial part we are seeing that because the patient was having persistent chest pain, 
maybe it the, because it was not responding to endometriosis. No, no, in no, I'm not. In, he, he underwent angioplasty, stenting, then yes. he came back with fever chills. But there was no cardiac event or there was no angina or ischemia or anything. If, so effusion. why did you… So the presenting effusion, complaint effusion was, was fever there. with chest pain, sir, persisting chest pain. Okay. Fever with persisting chest pain. Persist. Effusion also was there. So you haven't suspected an abscess when you died? First part we didn't, sir, but uh, when he did not respond to the yeah, uh, endomethacin and he continued to have fever, then we thought that probably there was an abscess or something. At the time of angioplasty, what was there? Lot of G material used? Uh, sir, it was done at elsewhere centre, sir. We don't have any idea, sir. <laughs> Improvement of cathode of hygiene is necessary. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sham.